Megan's story unfolds as a single mother striving against all odds to provide for her two sons, Tyler and Frank. At 58, she carries the weight of her past a divorce born out of necessity to escape her ex-husband's destructive alcoholism and violence. With her roots in hairdressing, Megan hustles through her days, splitting her time between a barber shop and a factory, a testament to her relentless commitment to her family. The tale takes a turn with Tyler, her elder son, who views the world through lenses tinted with cleanliness and order. His sharp eyes often catch the grime that clings stubbornly to Megan's hands, residue of her hard labor that refuses to wash away. In one instance, while preparing dinner, she opts for oversized plastic gloves to keep the peace. Yet, the gloves betray her, leading to a minor mishap. This incident only deepens Tyler's disdain, marking his mother's hands as symbols of what he perceives to be a less-than-ideal life. Tyler's journey through academia lands him in a reputable university, fueling his desire for independence and, perhaps, a silent yearning to distance himself from a past that embarrasses him. Megan, on the other hand, grapples with the harsh reality of their financial situation, unable to support Tyler's dreams of living alone immediately after graduation. His accusations sting, suggesting she hoards the fruits of her labor for herself, ignoring the visible signs of wear on his and her own clothes, a clear indication of their financial strain. Frank, the younger son, paints a starkly different picture. Disinterested in traditional studies, he finds solace and success in programming, carving out a career from the confines of their modest apartment. His understanding of his mother's sacrifices forms a bond marked by empathy, standing in contrast to Tyler's critical stance. The tension within the family peaks when Tyler, fresh out of university, confronts the reality of the savings Megan managed to scrape together. His accusation of having wealthy parents feels like a slap in the face, ignoring the evident struggles and sacrifices that define their life. Megan's narrative is a poignant reflection on the complexities of family dynamics, the silent battles waged by single parents, and the chasm that misunderstandings and unmet expectations can create between loved ones. It's a story of resilience, love, and the harsh judgments that can sometimes come from those closest to us, serving as a reminder of the strength it takes to rise above adversity and the importance of understanding and empathy in bridging the gaps that divide us. Megan's life took another challenging turn when her son Tyler, who had grown critical of her decision to leave his high-earning, highly educated father due to his alcoholism, took a step towards independence. Despite the hardships Megan faced to ensure a better life for her sons, Tyler seemed to hold a grudge against her for leaving a financially secure situation. His perspective was shaped by the belief that wealth could have offered them a better life, even if it came at the cost of enduring his father's drunken outbursts. The bittersweet moment of Tyler taking the money Megan offered for his new start, without a word of his whereabouts, left her with mixed emotions proud of his independence, yet saddened by his distance. Tyler's approach to money was troublesome. He often returned home only when he needed financial help, disregarding his younger brother Frank's attempts to protect their mother's savings. This repeated behavior made it difficult for Megan to put aside money for her future, causing strain within the family. The narrative took an unexpected turn when Tyler announced his upcoming marriage, a moment that filled Megan with hope. She imagined that having someone significant in his life might lead Tyler to understand the love and sacrifices she made for him, a lesson she believed he could learn from his future wife. However, Tyler's request for Megan to attend the meeting with his fiancée's family came with a caveat that hinted at his lingering embarrassment about his roots. He asked her to ensure she looked presentable, not to bring shame upon him. Megan's anticipation for the family meeting was cut short by a call from Tyler, during which he bluntly told her not to come, suggesting that his fiancé's parents, being business people, might not see Megan favorably due to their different backgrounds. The call ended abruptly, leaving Megan to confront the painful realization that her joy for Tyler's marriage was overshadowed by his continued reluctance to fully embrace their family's humble circumstances. This story reflects the deep-seated complexities of familial relationships, the scars left by past decisions, and the ongoing struggle between financial stability and emotional well-being. Megan's journey is a testament to a mother's enduring love and sacrifice, 
facing the harsh reality that not all her efforts to provide a better life for her children would be recognized or appreciated in the way she hoped. Despite these challenges, she remains a figure of strength and resilience, navigating the difficult waters of parenting with a heart full of love, even when faced with rejection and misunderstanding. From the moment Tyler left home, Megan's heart was heavy with concern for her eldest son. She worried about his well-being, about the minor details of his life like whether he might catch a cold. The news of his marriage brought a sense of relief to her. The thought of someone else being there for Tyler filled her with comfort. Megan longed to meet the woman who had captured her son's heart, to personally ask her to look after him. However, her heart sank when Tyler told her not to attend the meeting with his future in-laws. Frank, overhearing this, couldn't hide his frustration, lamenting the wasted effort and excitement over his new suit, and calling out Tyler's selfishness. Days later, as Megan's workday was drawing to a close, an unexpected call from Tyler stirred a whirlwind of emotions. His fiancée's parents wanted to meet her, and suddenly, she found herself caught in a dilemma. Show up in her work attire, or risk being late by going home to change. Opting against disrespect, she headed straight to the venue after a hurried attempt to freshen up with drugstore makeup and tidying her clothes as best as she could. Arriving at the upscale restaurant, Megan's apprehension grew. She pushed through her discomfort, introducing herself to the in-laws and Tyler's fiancé with a humble apology for any delay. Just as the introductions were made, Tyler intervened, claiming his mother had allergies to prevent her from dining at the restaurant a quick exit strategy for what he perceived as an embarrassing situation. Megan, without actual allergies, played along, though she felt ushered out too quickly, leaving her yearning for more time to connect with her future daughter-in-law. The following day, Tyler's call brought with it a storm of criticism, chastising Megan for her appearance and questioning her understanding of a dress code. Frank, ever the protective younger brother, took the phone from Megan. He defended her passionately, reminding Tyler of the last-minute invitation and his earlier insistence that Megan need not bother coming. Frank's words highlighted the unfairness of Tyler's expectations and the impossibility of Megan's situation. This narrative showcases the complexities of familial expectations and the challenges of navigating relationships strained by miscommunication and differing values. Despite the setbacks, Megan's love and concern for her sons remain unwavering, a testament to her resilience and dedication as a mother. Frank's defense of Megan underlines the bond of mutual respect and understanding that sometimes, in the face of unfair criticism, family stands up for each other, highlighting the importance of empathy and support within the family dynamic. After regaining the phone from Frank, I tried to grasp the magnitude of Tyler's future through his words. He spoke of the prestige associated with his soon-to-be-in-law's business, a venture he didn't fully understand but saw as a stepping stone to his ambition of being an employer, not an employee. His message was clear, he viewed his background, and by extension, me, as a barrier to his aspirations. His concluding remark that low-income factory workers don't need to come to the wedding struck a chord deep within me. Despite the hurt, I responded with acceptance, prioritizing his happiness over my own feelings of rejection. The phone call left me reflecting on the fleeting interaction with Tyler's fiancée A, a young woman I had barely greeted, and her parents, who seemed kind and well-mannered. The thought of them becoming Tyler's new family filled me with a sense of isolation. Yet I tried to come to terms with this evolving reality. As I continued my work at the barbershop and factory, I pushed my emotions aside, focusing on the future, especially Frank's. The possibility of contributing to Frank's happiness by saving for his wedding gave me a renewed purpose. However, just when I had started to adjust to the idea of being absent from Tyler's wedding, he reached out again, barely two weeks before the ceremony. Despite our strained conversation and his previous insistence that I was unwelcome, he now presented me with a new and frankly unreasonable request. He reminded me of the costs associated with weddings, implying a financial contribution was expected from me. This new demand from Tyler was perplexing, considering the distance he had placed between us. It seemed our relationship, already hanging by a thread, was being tested once more. Yet, this also opened a door to perhaps mend what was broken, 
a chance to understand and possibly bridge the gap that had formed between us. Despite the pain and confusion, this moment underscored the complex dynamics of familial relationships, the challenges of meeting expectations, and the enduring hope for reconciliation and understanding. When Tyler pressed me for financial support for his wedding, his words struck a chord. My response highlighting the importance of saving for one's own wedding seemed to frustrate him, especially when I questioned his lack of preparation despite being employed. His insistence on me finding the money, even suggesting borrowing it. Reluctantly, I agreed to his demand, promising to gather the funds for him. This concession seemed to appease him for the moment. Upon his visit to collect the arranged money, Tyler's demeanor was one of unspoken triumph. He left without a word, leaving me to grapple with the weight of the debt I had incurred for his sake. The fear of this financial burden potentially falling on Frank should anything happen to me was a constant worry. I was determined to work harder than ever to settle this debt quickly. Then, unexpectedly, on the day of Tyler's wedding, a day I was explicitly told to avoid a surprising call came through. It was Tyler, urging me in a frantic tone to come to the wedding immediately and to bring Frank along. Caught off guard by a sudden invitation, I quickly prepared myself and rushed to the venue. Upon arrival, I was swiftly ushered into the hall, where I was suddenly thrust into the limelight. The announcement of my arrival by the bride's father and the ensuing applause caught me off guard. Amidst the mixed emotions of embarrassment and happiness, I found my way to my seat, feeling the warmth of the welcome. This unexpected turn of events, transitioning from being an unwelcome guest to being celebrated, painted a vivid picture of the unpredictable nature of familial relationships and the unforeseen moments of reconciliation and acceptance that can emerge, even in strained circumstances. It was a poignant reminder of the enduring bonds of family, capable of overcoming misunderstandings and disagreements through acts of love and inclusivity. At Tyler's wedding, my heart was a mix of emotions. My eldest son, Tyler, stood apart, his body language tense and his gaze averted, seemingly unsettled by my introduction to the gathered guests. In contrast, Frank, my younger son, was the picture of optimism encouraging me to ignore Tyler's discomfort and enjoy the celebration. He reminded me that we were here at the personal invitation of the bride's father, a detail that brought a sense of belonging amidst the initial awkwardness. This invitation wasn't a mere formality. It was extended with sincerity, especially after the bride's father had visited me at the factory, curious about my absence and unsatisfied with Tyler's vague explanations. Frank's enthusiasm for the feast and the day's events helped me embrace the moment, allowing me to fully appreciate the significance of Tyler's big day. The reception unfolded smoothly, filled with warmth and celebration, marking a memorable milestone for the family. After the event, I sought to express my gratitude to the bride's parents, a gesture of appreciation for their hospitality and kindness. However, as I approached the family waiting room, I overheard a jarring comment from Tyler, suggesting my presence was merely tolerated out of pity by the bride's family. His words stung, but before I could process them, the bride's father intervened, challenging Tyler's attitude toward me. He detailed the financial sacrifices I had made for Tyler's sake, highlighting the extent of my contributions towards his education, living expenses, and now, the wedding. The revelation of these sacrifices including the payday loan I had taken to cover the wedding expenses, painted a vivid picture of the financial strain I endured. Frank, ever supportive, stood by me, reinforcing the bride's father's words. He pointed out the additional financial burden Tyler's demands had placed on me, a reality Tyler seemed to have overlooked. The bride's father then approached, extending a small paper bag towards me, a gesture that felt like a bridge being built between our families. This moment, tense yet transformative, underscored the complexities of family dynamics, the silent struggles often borne by parents, and the unexpected allies that can emerge in times of need. Upon receiving the envelope from the bride's father, I was unaware of its contents and the profound gesture it represented. We are giving back the large sum you contributed for the wedding, he explained, proposing an unconventional repayment plan for Tyler. He suggested that Tyler work at their daycare center, using his salary to cover the wedding expenses. This idea caught Tyler by surprise, 
especially since the business in question was a daycare center, and he had no experience or qualifications in childcare. The bride's father clarified with no room for misinterpretation that Tyler would not be managing but starting at the grassroots level, dealing with the everyday challenges of a childcare setting. This included tasks far removed from Tyler's expectations, such as cleaning and maintenance jobs that would ground him in the reality of hard work and dedication, much like the efforts of the hardworking mothers who relied on their service. Tyler's initial shock at the prospect of cleaning and other humble tasks was a wake-up call. It was then I realized the bride's father was Mr. Walter, someone who had played a significant role in my children's early years, especially during the tumultuous period following my separation from their father. This revelation brought a sense of full circle to the moment, bridging past kindnesses with the present situation. Mr. Walter and his wife, both familiar figures from my past, reassured me of their support. This gesture of returning the wedding contribution and providing Tyler with an opportunity to grow was their way of standing by our family. In time, Tyler resigned from his previous job to work at the daycare, a decision supported by a commitment from the bride's parents to ensure he compensated me for the financial burdens he had imposed. They planned to deduct a portion of his salary for this purpose until every penny was repaid. Tyler's journey at the daycare was set to be a transformative one, with Mr. Walter envisioning a future where Tyler would not only earn his childcare certification, but also inherit the mantle of responsibility and compassion that comes with it. This scenario painted a hopeful picture of redemption and growth, not just for Tyler, but for our family as a whole. As I continued my work, I felt a renewed sense of optimism, grateful for the unexpected support and the promising path laid out for Tyler by his new family.